Hello again everyone from Tokyo, Japan, and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera, where today I'm going to be talking about another uh, Minolta SLR camera. I don't do a lot of uh, videos on Minolta SLRs. I am a more of a fan of their rangefinder cameras, uh, the ones which they produced back in the 1950s and uh, 60s and such. But uh, when I come across a nice example of a Minolta SLR, uh, I'll occasionally do a video about it, and uh, that's why I'm making this video today. Uh, this particular camera is the Minolta XE, uh, which is also known as the XE1 or XE7, uh, depending on where you happen to live. Uh, for those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage cameras in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you'd like to buy this Minolta or another vintage camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. So the Minolta XE was released in 1974 and was quite a technologically advanced camera. Uh, by the mid-1970s, there were uh, great, great strides in improving the design of electronics and uh, controls for cameras, things from the, the light meters to uh, the shutter mechanisms and everything else. And these cameras were light years ahead of the cameras which were produced only a year earlier. Uh, when this camera arrived today, the first thing I noticed, you know, it's, it seemed to feel a lot like the Minolta SRT, which was released way back in 1966, and which was the camera which really put Minolta on the map with uh, series photographers. Uh, the SRT was a wildly popular camera uh, here in Japan and elsewhere, and was used by uh, uh, series amateurs and pros around the world. Uh, but by the 1970s, it was beginning to become a, a dated design, and people were more interested in cameras with uh, more sophisticated uh, controls and features. And the electronically controlled uh, shutter allowed very accurate shutter timing compared to the mechanical systems which were found on most other cameras at the time. So, uh, as I said, it feels a lot like the SRT camera, but on the top half, it's different. It's like the professional model uh, X1, as they called it in Japan. It was called other things in other countries. Minolta is a weird company when it comes to naming products. And the similarities to the X1 are, of course, the, the, the shutter speed dial with the automatic system on it, the, the shape of the top cover, and also the switches on the back, uh, the switch for the, the power and also a eyepiece switch. So let's go ahead and get uh, started on the review of this camera and I'll go ahead and cover the uh, features, controls, and functions of the camera. Uh, before I get into that, first I want to cover a couple of common problems you may find with this camera. Uh, if you have get a, come across one of these cameras in a pawn shop or a thrift store or attic or something like that, the mirror is probably going to be locked up in it because the shutter in this camera requires batteries uh, to work properly. If it doesn't have batteries, the batteries are dead, the shutter will fire it only at one speed and the mirror will lock up. Uh, to unlock the mirror, you simply turn the dial to either X or B and that will allow the mirror to drop down and then you can at least take a look through the viewfinder. Uh, another issue these cameras have is deterioration of the prism. Uh, so uh, the prisms in these cameras, they sometimes the silvering comes apart in them and makes it a little bit difficult to see through them. Uh, the third problem they have is the magnets in the electronic shutter sometimes stick together, which will prevent the shutter from firing at it, the, the speed you select. It'll only fire at one speed, like it doesn't have any batteries. So those are the three things to keep in mind. All three are fixable. Uh, you know, but uh, some will require a little bit of time, effort, and money to get going. So, uh, starting with the controls and functions, here on the top left we have the film rewind knob. Uh, the lever pops out like so, and it has a plastic roller tip, which makes it easier to rewind the film. Uh, this lever also pops up, and if you keep pulling it up, it will release the film door on the back. Uh, pop it back down when you're not opening the film door. On the, below that we have this dial here which you use to program the film speed in the camera. Uh, this camera doesn't have uh, uh, automatic film speed setting, you have to do it yourself. So when you buy your say 100, 200 or 400 speed film and load it in the camera, you will have to set the film speed by pushing this chrome button that I'm touching with my finger and simply turning until these numbers, the proper number, lines up with the white dot. On the other side here we have the exposure compensation and this camera allows you to increase or decrease exposure compensation plus or minus two stops. Exposure compensation might sound uh, uh, a little confusing to people who don't know a lot about photography. 
but uh, a quick reference is that uh, the camera is set to shoot at, you know, light meters are generally set, set at 18% uh, gray and light. So the light meter is programmed on that amount of light. So if you're shooting at something which is white like snow or black like a leather jacket, it's kind of going to assume that this is 18%. So the white will look gray and the black will look gray. So in order for the white to look white, or the black to look black, you need to adjust the exposure compensation. So you add a, a stop or two when you're shooting in the snow, and you would uh, reduce it a, st a stop or two when you're shooting at something which is black and you want it to look black. And fortunately, fortunately, I don't want to say unfortunately, I say and fortunately, uh, this camera allows an easy way to set exposure compensation. Uh, here we have a shoe for mounting a flash gun on the top. Uh, Minolta had some uh, factory flash units which worked uh, kind of semi-automatically with these cameras. You can use pretty much any modern flash on one of these cameras, just follow the instructions on the flash. There's a PC sync socket located on the left side here so you can use a remote flash or multiple flashes. There's a battery check lamp located here on the side. It's pretty much the same kind which you see on say the Nikon FE or other similar cameras. Just push down on it and the LED should light up. I think it's an LED, I think it's just an ordinary light bulb, but as you can see, the, this camera has batteries in it and uh, they appear to be working. Uh, moving further on, we have the shutter speed dial and uh, this dial has a full range of speeds from uh, the bulb and four second, two second, all the way up to one one thousandth of a second. Personally, I would have preferred uh, more speeds on the top end rather than on the bottom end. Uh, I've never actually needed a camera which has two and four second shutter speeds, but, but I have often wished I had two thousandth or one four thousandth on the top end. Uh, this is for shooting in bright light or trying to freeze action. Minolta made a variety of lenses for these cameras, and my favorite Minolta lens is the MC Rokor 58mm f1.2 lens. It's a really wonderful lens and fits on this camera, but it's really hard to use in daylight with a maximum uh, shutter speed of 1 1,000th of a second. In order to shoot, you know, uh, get the most out of the, the narrow depth of field, you either have to shoot it in low light or you have to add neutral density filters to it. So that's kind of something which I wish they had done with this camera. But uh, for general use and most lenses when you're shooting at you know, the typical apertures, uh, this, this range of shutter speeds is entirely adequate. Uh, over here we have the shutter release button and it accepts a standard cable release. Uh, here we have the film winding and shutter charging lever. This is an amazing lever. It's wonderfully easy to turn and very, very smooth. It feels a lot like, maybe not quite as silky as like on the Nikon F3, which uses ball bearings in the mechanism, but it's far, far better uh, than what comes in the earlier Minolta cameras and better than what I've seen on ca most Canon and Nikon cameras of this era. It's really smooth. In front here, we have a switch here, which uh, uh, a popular uh, feature in these cameras was multiple exposures in those days where you could, uh, take two images on a single section of film and this is pretty good for uh, interesting special effects. Uh, I, I haven't used it myself except accidentally and uh, and it, it's kind of fun back in those days it was there was a, a lot of art. Uh, a couple of the old uh, I guess grandfathers of photography I think Steichen and others were really masters of the multiple exposure uh, uh, photography. Uh, as I said I've only done it accidentally. <laughs> Uh, uh, not intentionally. And cameras, you know, uh, certain cameras, medium and large format cameras, where it's quite you know, easy to accidentally take a double exposure. Moving to the back of the camera, uh, the first thing we have here is the film counter dial, which is located on the back of the camera, rather on the top. Kind of a funny place to put it, but uh, it, it works just as well there, I guess. Here we have a switch for switching off and on the light meter, the power switch for the camera. Uh, here we have the viewfinder eyepiece, and this eyepiece is dovetailed, which allows you to put on an eye cup or a diopter adjusting lens. This, ca this finder doesn't have diopter adjustment in it. Uh, this wasn't really something you could find yet in these days. It came out in later cameras, so you would simply just uh, put a lens on the back. Uh, these lenses are quite easy to find and often you'll find that uh, these diopters made for other cameras, so Canon or Nikon or anyone with the slide-on dovetail system, uh, they often interchange between pretty much all the cameras. I've used the Minolta and Pentax ones on Olympus and vice versa. Uh, they work quite well and I prefer these the slip-on diopters rather than the adjustable ones because 
uh, for me they just seem to work uh, better. On this side here we have a as you can see a shutter which closes the eyepiece and this is to increase the accuracy of the light meter. Uh, you might be shooting one of these cameras on a tripod and uh, say you're taking uh, a landscape or uh, advertising photo in a photo box, you know, a, a photo box or studio box or something like that, or taking a macro shot of uh, you know, a coin or something like that. And you won't be looking through the viewfinder when you take the photo, but when you take your eye away from the viewfinder, light can actually find its way inside and find its way to the light meter, and that can decrease the accuracy of the exposure when you're you know, using the camera in auto mode. So to prevent that from happening, they put this uh, switch on the back to close the viewfinder. Uh, here we have a place for putting a film card. Uh, the top of a film carton usually has the type of film and film speed. And to remind you of what you have loaded in it, you just simply slide it into the back and that way you know what kind of film you have located in the camera. We have a series of numbers here and this is just a conversion for uh, ASA or ISO to the old DIN system. Now DIN was obsolete all the way back in the 1950s but there were hardcore old timers back you know, still lingering into the 70s and even today here in Japan uh, who, uh, who still stubbornly stick to the old school kind of uh, ways and, uh, and so this was put to, to satisfy them. Uh, uh, Anyway, let's continue. At the bottom of the camera here, we have the release button, which you have to push before you rewind the film. When you shoot all the way to the end and the film won't wind anymore, depress this button and rewind the film. And uh, when you put in new film and start again, this button will pop back to normal automatically. On the bottom here, we have a standard quarter inch tripod socket. Uh, here we have the battery chamber cover. Good thing about this camera is it uses ordinary uh, LR or SR44 batteries, which you could find anywhere for next to nothing. You can get a, uh, $5 will get you several years worth of batteries for one of these cameras. Uh, and uh, quite easy to find and not so prone to corrosion or issues like the old Mercury batteries in the earlier cameras. Moving to the front of the camera, we'll go ahead and take a look at the left side here. And uh, we have a switch on the bottom here, and this is for uh, the flash modes for X Sync mode or uh, I think rear curtain mode, allowing you to use uh, either the uh, both types of flash, either a strobe flash or a bulb flash. Bulb flashes were still very popular in the 1970s. I think I already pointed out the PC sync socket. Uh, here we have the button which you depress to release the lens. You depress the button and then you turn the lens leftward and it pops off just like that. With the lens off we can see the mirror box. As you can see the the mirror is stuck up in this camera. If I switch it to B it pops back down. The magnets are stuck in the shutter of this camera so I've got to kind of take off the leatherette and find my way to the control magnets and separate them and clean them and this camera should be going again after that. Uh, over here we have a uh, stop down button or this this button stops down the aperture and allows you to, you know, I guess in other uh, uh, cameras it's called a depth of field preview button. So when you push this button in you can kind of see uh, uh, the amount of depth of field that the lens is seeing. Uh, here we have the self timer. You simply pull this all the way to the end and underneath is a small chrome button which you depress and that will get the self timer working. And of course, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, when you put the lens back on, there's an orange mark located uh, on the lens. You can see it right here where my finger is. You line that up with this screw on the top. This is actually a screw under this uh, red cap, which you have to remove to remove the top cover. You line those up and turn the lens uh, just like that. So who would be interested in a camera like the Minolta XE? Um, I myself might be interested in these cameras, mainly because I like the design, I like the way it feels in my hands, I like the MCMD uh, Rokor mount, uh, which uh, Minolta made a huge amount of lenses for these cameras. You could get the, the fisheye lenses, wide-angle lenses, a number of standard and high-speed lenses, telephoto lenses, and super telephoto lenses. So pretty much uh, any type of photography you were interested in, uh, there was a lens made which was suitable for, for that genre. And the lenses for these cameras are remarkably cheap compared to what they cost back in the day. Uh, back when I, film cameras were still on the market and I wanted to buy a new lens, they were just for a, a brand name lens from Minolta, Nikon, or Canon. These were just really expensive and it would be you know, uh, two weeks pay of uh, what I was earning in those days to buy a so-so lens and months and months of pay to buy a really high-end lens. And nowadays, uh, lenses in those days which sold for as much as 
$3,000, and $3,000 was a lot of money in those days, can be had for five or $600 today. So, and five or $600, uh, a lot less value than those days. So, uh, a really good camera for someone who likes the Minolta uh, name, the Minolta uh, Rokor lenses, and, uh, yeah, and there were a lot of Minolta fans out there. Uh, a lot of people got into uh, Minolta in, uh, I guess, the 80s and 90s when the Maxim cameras came on the market. They became really very popular. And uh, a lot of people really love the newer Minolta uh, digital cameras. And some might be interested in shooting film with an old Minolta SLR. And XE is a good choice. It's not quite as primitive as the old SRT T series. And, and uh, this automatic feature is really wonderful for someone who uh, is trying to get into uh, uh, photography and maybe uh, yeah, this, this allows of course you to use full manual operation. You can just look at the meter needle moving up and down and it will recommend which uh, shutter speed to use and then you would simply dial the shutter speed and you can operate it manually that way. But a very simple way to operate the camera is just to put it in the auto mode and just go out and shoot like crazy with it. But anyway, uh, that's it for my video about the Minolta XE. As I've said before in other uh, channels, I'm trying to get more people interested in uh, vintage cameras uh, to come and visit my store. That's an obvious reason. And film photography in general. Uh, if you'd like to help, uh, please subscribe. And that way you'll uh, be the first to know when new videos come out. And also, uh, please click the like button if you can. Uh, that draws more people here and hopefully they'll find this uh, channel interesting. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.